everything right, yet still be on the verge of diabetes. Our bodies are all different, and it's what we are doing today that ultimately determines our long-term health span. Your Blood Sugar Boot Camp will allow you to expand the gap between health and disease. Genetics, lifestyle factors, medications, hydration, stress, sleep quality, and external toxins all play a part in your blood sugar level. You don't have to be diabetic for blood sugar levels to wreak havoc on your energy and quality of life. Your Blood Sugar Boot Camp is an online program which offers the strategies to put you in the driver's seat to learn how to be in control of your own health. It provides proven strategies to reverse high blood sugar. You will learn how to measure and identify your biggest triggers. Get educated on food choices, increase energy, improve sleep quality, and master stress management skills to get you back on the right track. To learn more, find us on the web at yourbloodsugarbootcamp.com. When you know your numbers, you can own your health. Take control of your health and contact us at yourbloodsugarbootcamp.com. Do you know your numbers? Talk here. Talk there. Talk 1470 AM and 95.3 FM. The Health and Wealth Radio Network. WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Are you tired of feeling tired? Confused by the conflicting health information in the media? Maybe you can't walk into a grocery store without being overwhelmed by product label claims. Living a fast-paced, overstressed life? Are you or your loved ones being diagnosed or labeled with chronic illnesses? Finding balance and health in today's culture is a challenge we all face. Welcome to Quality Living with Leslie, where we debunk the myths, bring clarity to the confusion, and help expand the gap between health and illness. To get in on the show, call 888-565-1470. Now, let's get started. and welcome to Quality Living with Leslie. I'm Leslie Harrington, and I'm a certified functional wellness educator and diabetes preparer professional. What that means is I empower people to be their own advocate, manage their numbers, and address all aspects of health so they can prevent and reverse disease. I will start off again with my disclaimer that I am not a medical doctor and do not engage directly or indirectly in diagnosing disease, dispensing medical advice, or prescribing the use of any products or services as treatment for sickness or disease. This information is solely for information purposes and for people of normal and good health. And this information is not intended to be a substitute for proper medical care provided by a physician. You should always cooperate with a health professional of your choice with a mutual goal of building personal health. That's like winded. (laughs) Um, And tonight's show can be obviously seen on Quality Living with Leslie Facebook Live. And you can listen as well on 95.3 FM, 1470 AM, and iHeartRadio at WNN 1470. And to join the conversation, as always, 888-565-1470. Feel free to call in with questions at any point in the show. And again, I'm super excited tonight because tonight's guest is not only a very dear friend, she has so much information to share and a really, really important topic. And I like to introduce Marcy Siegel, who is a pharmaceutical representative, certified yoga instructor, and avid cyclist. And Marcy was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when she was in her late teens. So... Really quick before we get into Marcy's story, just so that you all know the difference between type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is characterized by actual destruction of pancreatic beta cells. So the pancreas doesn't doesn't work, doesn't function, it's not able to create insulin in your body. Whereas type 2 is more, um, it can be, it can grow into an insulin issue as far as your pancreas functioning, but it primarily starts out with insulin resistance, so your pancreas is still producing insulin and your cells are just not handling it. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So just so you know the difference is type 1 is also diagnosed primarily in adolescents and children. Um, it used to be considered um, juvenile diabetes is what it used to be called. It is being diagnosed at a much higher rate today, and it doesn't necessarily, is not restricted to being uh, diagnosed in children and adolescents. So. Jumping back to Marcy's story, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. 
You're welcome. <laughs> and um, Marcy, tell me, can you tell me a little bit about your story and your background? I mean, you were diagnosed at 18, so there's a little bit of a difference in the age there. So, yes. Yeah, so, and I am considered juvenile diabetic type 1. Um, I was in a really bad car accident. And shortly after that, I started showing signs and symptoms of being diabetic, but it doesn't run in my family, so it wasn't something that we were really looking for, but I really felt lethargic. Um, I had weight loss, my vision started going, so um, I really felt like I was living in a fog before I was diagnosed. And you had just had the accident, so... Yeah, it was within a couple months. It took a couple months for the signs and symptoms to um, become evident. And finally, um, when I was placed in the hospital, my glucose level was 588. Oh, my gosh. So it was a dire situation when I finally got diagnosed. And did you think, with the symptoms, like, did you have any idea for a second that that could have been what it would be? Because you probably no, still really had the accident. No, I really felt like it was all related from the accident. Um, I had a lot of internal bruising from the accident, lacerations, um, broken nose. So I just felt like it was from being in the car accident that I wasn't really feeling well and my body just wasn't responding and getting back to where it should be. Um, so I, I really had no idea that I was dealing with diabetes when I was first diagnosed. And you had your spleen removed too, if I recall, right? Or I didn't have, you had, you didn't have to have anything. Removed, no. Okay. No. That's just childhood memory where yeah. as clearly I'm not a child <laughs> anymore. <laughs> So what, what types of things did they do to test and kind of validate and, you know, really support well, their a, theory of this high sugar? Yeah, well, they did a blood glucose level, showed that I was, my sugar level was 588, and immediately they started me on insulin. Um, and while I was in the hospital, they allowed me to experience a low, so I would know how to respond to that low. They brought me juice, so I got really shaky. Um, I got disoriented when my sugar got low so that I would have the experience in the hospital and know how to respond to that okay. type of experience if once it happened, once I went home. And I was in the hospital for um, two weeks where they trained me how to um, administer the insulin and just teach me proper diet. Okay. So they really were on it and kept you in there and, taught and did a lot of training. Yes. And we're talking, this was 28 years ago. So, you know, things have changed. Yeah. Definitely nowadays. Um, back then it took 90 seconds to do a sugar check. So oh you'd have gosh. to wait to see, you know, a minute and a half. Now I wear a continuous glucometer. So well, and even constant. before you probably had to like have so much blood, you know, now they're like those teeny little needles and they're like, yes. must have been like a lot more. I mean, I know um, being in the pharmacy world for a long time, you know, they were always coming out with new technology and the big things with, you know, your talking meters and your meters that are requiring less and less of an impact and, you know, trying to be a, less uh, disruptive, I guess, to your life and having to poke yourself constantly. Absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned the glucose meter, um, so, or your continuous meter and then also a pump. Yes. So when did you decide to go so, look into those options? Well, when I first was diagnosed, I actually um, was taking five shots a day, which was acting like a pancreas just to keep it even. Um, but when um, my husband and I decided that we wanted to start a family, um, the doctor thought it would be really important for me to start on a pump. So that's when I started on pump before I had my first child. And I've been on it ever since. And how long would you say it took for you to adjust to figuring out your body and making the dietary changes? And I mean, I've known you most of my life and you are always very active and, and very fit and I, you know, I don't remember exactly much about your diet in high school, but so you still had to make dramatic changes to support this now new lifestyle. Yeah, so it's just, it's a constant balance. I still adjust. 28 years later, I'm still adjusting on a daily basis. Um, I can eat the same thing. I can exercise the same way every day and I'm, I'm still, my glucose levels can be different on a different basis. But you know, I, I try to um, just eat balanced, well-balanced meals. I feel better when I'm eating a well-balanced meal, meaning protein, um, little carbs, you know, salads, vegetables, and um, just working out has been a huge um, proponent in keeping me balanced yeah. mentally and physically. 
Yeah, and and I know that you're um, you're an avid cyclist and you ride regularly, and I want to ask you a little bit more about that. Before I want to go back, um, what Marcy was talking about when she was saying that, even though she was showing me her her continuous meter and then how it coincides with her um, your uh, insulin glu- the the pump, pump. pump insulin pump insulin pump, and it was really fascinating because I I've seen it a little bit. You and I played with it before, but. What she was explaining to me was that she could eat the exact same thing every day, do the exact same exercise every day, and the external factors and environmental factors and the things that are happening in her life are still impacting that, what they call in the, the, the basal rate, right? So her, her everyday meter still has to respond a certain way to what's happening naturally in her body. And that's the same for type two as well. So. You, when you're managing your sugar, if you're, you think everything's just strolling along perfectly, if you have an extra stress in your life or you're dehydrated or you ate a higher carb meal and you see a, a kind of a defined drop and then have to figure out how to get that balance back, there's so many factors that play a role in managing everyday sugar. So that goes for people, you know, their bodies ideally are naturally trying to maintain that homeostasis and the pain is supposed to be kind of doing the work of, of what your pump would be doing. But people don't realize, I think, that it's it's more than just exercise and diet. It's it's lifestyle management. And I mean, how, how do you manage stress? I mean, do you are you able to see a marked change when your your day might not be going the way that you... Oh, I absolutely see a, a, a notice. It's definitely there. Like I can look at my pump. I'm constantly looking at my pump throughout the day. And if I am in a stressful situation, I definitely see a spike in my glucose level. So, you know, that's why I try to maintain a healthy lifestyle, surround myself with family and friends that help support me um, in my physical activities and my mental activities as well. And just to really be um, balanced in the foods that I eat. Yeah. You know, but it's still, it, it, every day can vary. So there's no, there's no right or wrong, really. I don't feel, um, because you need to live life in balance, but um, just being very diligent and, and being on top of it before you see that it gets really out of hand and then you yes. don't feel good. Yes. That's when you become tired and very lethargic and you know, lose concentration. So it's very important to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So when they induced your low, I guess that would be somewhat equivalent to like a glucose tolerance test today where they take you in an office setting and they actually do the juice and then they measure you like an hour or two later and they they watch for that low. And that's how they're doing some type 2. That's one of the tests that they might use to kind of confirm a type 2 diagnosis. Um, So what are some of those things you feel? So what are some of your symptoms when you're at a high versus when you're at a low? Do you, are they, I I know there's a lot of overlap in some of them. Well, when I'm high, I'm like I said, I'm tired, I'm lethargic, um, I just, you know, lose concentration, I, my energy output, I, I lose that completely, especially if I am engaging in a physical activity and mm-hmm. I'm on my bike stay or I'm in a yoga class or Pilates and my sugar's high, I just don't have the energy, the output that I normally do if I'm maintaining a normal level. Now, when my sugar's low, the same thing. I lose that energy output, but I come become disoriented, shaky. Um, you feel like you're hungry. Um, when you're high, you also feel like you're hungry, very thirsty. So, um, but the two can be confusing, especially when you're first diagnosed of knowing. You'll know that you're off, yeah. but you won't know exactly if you're high or you're low, possibly. You could be confused on, you know, where you are. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's for, and, and for people with both type 1, I could see why it, it is somewhat common to have a high-carb meal and get tired after lunch or, you know, you see that in every, and that's where people being in tune with your body, and I always say knowing your numbers and knowing your health and, and just really being self-aware and not taking those type of things as the common things as normal and, and making sure that you're kind of on top of the fact that it's not normal to be shaky or sweaty after you have meals. You well, know, and it's and so important to be able to check where you are, to have that glucometer with you, because yeah. when I was first diagnosed, I had left my glucometer at home, and I'd gone out to um, go shopping, and there I was in a mall. I, had, I didn't have my meter on me. I didn't have any juice on me, 
And, um, you know, I knew I wasn't feeling right at the time, but I, I didn't really know how to tell if I was low or if I was high. Yeah. So I actually got juice and I drank the juice. And when I got home and was able to check, I was extremely high. So I probably really didn't need to have anything, have anything at that point. It was just that I wasn't you sure of where I was. So, um, you know, and then it took me several hours to get back down to a normal range to where then I felt yeah. good and balanced again. And, and, you know, it's important, too, to, for, for people to understand that even when you have a pump, you're still using needles and you're still having to test and you're still having to kind of, like, match up your continuous glucose monitor to make sure it's functioning properly and make sure your insulin's working properly. And it's just, it's a lot of work. And... I was talking to a pharmacist, um, a woman that it was in my Pilates class, and she's a pharmacist and a nurse, and she was back in school for something different, and we were talking about diabetes, and one of the things she had mentioned with the, we were talking about the dramatic increase in type 1 cases, and um, autoimmunity, and, and just some of the, the, we were theorizing, right? And she said to me that she was getting a lot of young patients coming into the pharmacy they were asking for more insulin because their insulin was running out because they were using their insulin as a weight management tool. And what some people don't understand, and we kind of said to, you know, your first symptom was weight loss, right? When you're at lacking insulin, you're going to lose weight, whereas people think if they're giving themselves insulin to bring their blood sugar down, well, then maybe they'll lose weight. And that's not how it works. Insulin's a fat storage hormone. So when you have insulin present in your bloodstream, your body is not able to utilize stored fat for fuel, right? So that was really fascinating to me that I, with today's day and age, that a student or someone younger like that might think that this could be something that would help manage weight. I was just, I, it broke my heart to even think that that was yeah. something they'd, they'd consider. Yeah. 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 Under those circumstances, so, yeah. I, I don't understand, but if there's any way to prevent going on insulin through diet, exercise, yeah, I, I would do that in a heartbeat. If I could take away having to have insulin on a daily basis, I would be very strict on yeah. food intake and exercise. Yeah, and, and I that's what I want to drive home, you know, to because I'm constantly with type 2. It's much more gradual. It's pro it's known as a progressive disease, and, and a lot of times people don't know what's happening in their body, and they don't see what what could potentially be there. And so... And so they end up getting to a place where, um, you know, they're, they're not sure what's coming. So when you're not in it, you don't necessarily, you know, get to a place where you're that drastic about it. And I'm going to go a little bit back into where Marcy's story and how she manages it today um, right after we are taking a break. So I will see you on the other side. Don't forget you can call in to 888-465 or 565-1470. Thanks. Did you know you can be doing everything right, yet still be on the verge of diabetes? Our bodies are all different, and it's what we are doing today that ultimately determines our long-term health span. Your Blood Sugar Boot Camp will allow you to expand the gap between health and disease. Genetics, lifestyle factors, medications, hydration, stress, sleep quality, and external toxins all play a part in your blood sugar level. You don't have to be diabetic for blood sugar levels to wreak havoc on your energy and quality of life. Your Blood Sugar Boot Camp is an online program which offers the strategies to put you in the driver's seat to learn how to be in control of your own health. It provides proven strategies to reverse high blood sugar. You will learn how to measure and identify your biggest triggers. Get educated on food choices, increase energy, improve sleep quality, and master stress management skills to get you back on the right track. To learn more, find us on the web at yourbloodsugarbootcamp.com. When you know your numbers, you can own your health. Take control of your health and contact us at yourbloodsugarbootcamp.com. Do you know your numbers? Do you believe in the old adage, you are what you eat? If you do, then you understand that the food you eat has an impact on your state of mind, health, and fitness. Your food literally becomes a part of you, a part of your cells. It tells your DNA and genes what to do. 
We at Fresh Fusion have taken it upon ourselves to relieve you of the stress and work that it takes to achieve a healthy and balanced diet, all while maintaining the safety and confidence of eating in your own home. Our goal is to help you eliminate the guessing and time involved in deciding what to eat on a daily basis. When developing our recipes, we bear in mind that eating nutritionally should also be delicious, enjoyable, and most important, easy. We make it simple for people to eat out. We use only the freshest ingredients from local organic and natural food sources to create your healthy, palate-pleasing meals. Check us out on the web at thefreshfusion.com, phone 954-533-7423 or 954-835-5189. Hours, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You're watching and listening to Quality Living with Leslie. Overstressed? Looking for balance? Join our conversation, 888-565-1470. Do that. That's so good. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, we are back with Marcy Siegel and uh, wanted to jump right back into, we, we talked a lot about some of the struggles and the things that she goes through on a day-to-day -day basis, but I, I want to um, express how invisible that is to the rest of the world because we work out at a studio together and, and most of the people in the studio know, we, you've been there for ooh, eons, yes. <laughs> you know, right? No, Marcy. And um and most people wouldn't even know or consider that you could possibly have any ailment because you're so physically active and you're so successful with your fitness. And um, so it is something that you tend to take on as, as you're just a warrior and you're very courageous about it and it's something that doesn't run your life. No. And no, you know, people don't know and I want you to, you know, help, help me understand like what's a day in your life look like and, and when you have a day where you, ha I mean, there's got to be days when you very well should feel sorry for yourself for at least a moment and sit in it and then you get on, right? So yeah. tell me about like a, an average day for you. Yeah, well, I, I really believe that diet, diabetes, having diabetes, type 1 diabetes has driven me to be, yeah. you know, physically and mentally fit. It's, it's a driving force behind my life yeah. and it's made me a better person to be honest with you I'm very consistent in my workouts I ride my bike four days a week and that entails Tuesday and Thursday morning I do 35 miles and Saturday 50 miles and Sunday 50 miles and you're 35 miles like each yeah so she's talking about like each ride so <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm I'm doing over 150 miles That's a week on my bike outside but I love it and yes. I surround myself with family and friends and my Pilates classes and yoga. So if I'm having an off day, I know that I'm going to see family and friends. My husband is supports me. He's with me, you know, on the rides. He, you know, we try to do activities together on vacations. We're always hiking, biking. Um, we get our kids involved. So I just really turn into a lifestyle for me, yeah. and that's what I feel. I feel if you can find something that you love to do. You know, especially if you do have some physical ailment that would benefit. That from, motivates you. From and it inspires people. It, and it inspires me, being around people that are doing and love the same activities that I love to do. Yeah. So for me, it's not even a workout. If you told me I had to go to a gym every day and lift weights and run on a treadmill, I probably would not be consistent with that. Because not, it's not your soulmate workout. But it's, not, it's yeah. not. It's not what I love to do. I love riding. I love yoga, and I love Pilates. And you do a lot of riding in support of the JDRF. And so Marcy's out there with. You were telling me about how they have different um, programs, and it's it's a ride versus a race. Yes. So it benefits the um, American Diabetes Association. Um, it's called the Tour de Cure. And you can choose the lengths and routes that you want to ride. I chose the 100 mile. And <laughs> um, as a person with diabetes, they honor you. So you wear a red jersey so everybody knows. And that's why everybody's there, to support you yeah. and just motivate you, get behind you, encourage you. And we're fundraising for research and development for the American yeah. Diabetes Association. So what a great, great way for me to give back Definitely. Um, to the community as a person with type 1 diabetes, but doing something that I love. That's my passion. Yeah, and actually, uh, another passion, you have so many great passions, um, yoga. So tell me a little bit about your yoga. You do teach a couple days a week. Yes. So if you tell them who, where they can find you. <laughs> they can find me at Blue Soul on Wednesday nights and the Yoga Factory on Monday nights. So okay. I teach hot vinyasa. 
It's an hour and 15 minute class, and I absolutely fell in love with yoga about 20 years ago. And um, it's just really combining the cardio from the bike and then vinyasa, hot vinyasa, total body integration. So it's like strength training, just like Pilates is why I feel like Pilates and yoga are a great fit together because it's total body integration. Yeah. It's strength training. So the two of the cardio and the strength training, combining it together really helps me um, maintain glucose levels, balance in my life physically mentally i feel like super fit that way so it's and i love it so it's That's great awesome and then so when you do you wake up with a certain higher because your meter's kind of doing its job or your pump is doing its job throughout the evening do you wake up with any different type of high, or do you have to do anything in your initial morning routine? Because I know that's your morning when you start to work out. It's, and, and that's what works well for me. I, I like working out in the morning because I usually haven't given myself a bolus in the night. It's usually just a basal rate, okay. which if you have it right, it will um, allow you to um, maintain your blood glucose level. So in the morning, like I'll eat a banana and peanut butter and get on my bike. It's the same thing, a scoop of peanut butter, banana. And usually my blood glucose levels, you know, 120 when I wake up in the morning. Yeah. And, um, you know, if it's lower, I have a way of doing a temporary rate through my pump. So yeah. then it slows down the basal rate a little bit. And if I happen to wake up high, which sometimes I have woken up high, I, I'll give myself a little bit more insulin and then I get yeah. on my bike. But it does make it very easy just being consistent, working out first thing in the morning. Yeah. And then I don't think about it all day long anyway. When your body anyway. starts to yes. burn some of that glucose so you can give yourself less insulin when you're working right. through it physically. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I could just pick Marcy's brain all day and I just, it was really important for me to talk not just about type 2 but about type 1 and and you know there is a significant increase in type 1 and by 2015 or 2050 there's one in three people that are going to be diabetic statistically speaking and that's a very very scary number and a, a type 2 diabetic can become a type 1 in a way because their pancreas can actually get to a point where it's worn out and it's really not doing the job that it's supposed to be doing over a period of time because the cells actually do start to get damaged and um, on the flip side, a, a type 1 diabetic can also struggle with continually giving themselves insulin but not making any type of dietary or nutrition changes or fitness changes or lifestyle changes. And then they're just continuously giving themselves insulin when their cells will eventually start to not respond as well and become insulin resistant in that sense too. So I think it's really important to recognize that they're both a very, very, very serious disease and there's a lot of you know, dangerous things. So you're an amazing example of, of how to Thank really you. manage it and take control of it and not let it run your life. And Marcy is a, you know, thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you're you an for having me. You're so. an inspiration to me as well. Thanks, Marcy. Love what you're doing. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Thank you for joining me on Quality Living with Leslie, where we help you know better so you can do better to be the best version of yourself. For more information, you can find me at leslieharrington.net. That's leslieharrington.net. Have a great week. Now, go out and share the health. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily...